my intro all ready to go, and then I will be handing over to you both. Bob, I have pressed record, so we're all set to go. Brilliant. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's We Connect International webinar. Um, my name is Maggie Berry. I am the Executive Director for We Connect International in Europe, and I am delighted that you have joined us for today's webinar, LinkedIn, the risks and opportunities, and how to use it as a tool for business growth. This session is being presented by Heather White from Smart Networking and Matt Craven from the CV and Interview Advisors. I've known Heather for many years and she's absolutely my go-to contact for anything related to business networking and Matt is a thought leader on personal branding. In today's webinar, we are going to be looking at LinkedIn. So with 500 million members in over 200 countries, there is no escaping the reach of this online platform. However, some business owners are still not sure how best to use it, while others are generating millions of pounds of revenue from it. Heather and Matt are going to be demystifying for us, albeit at a relatively high level as we only have an hour today, um, LinkedIn, which is the biggest business database in the world with the tools that allow you to access every prospect, client, supplier or potential hire that you might ever want to connect with. To keep background noise to minimum, everybody's on, on mute, but you can use the Q&A functionality um, to ask any questions you might have and there'll be time at the end for discussion and questions. As Matt's going to be presenting first, then handing over to Heather and the session is being recorded so that you can listen back to it again. So Matt and Heather, thank you so much for presenting for us today and for sharing your expertise with us. I'm looking forward to it. It is over to you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Maggie, and uh, thanks for inviting us along. Um, so I'm going to kick off. So this is going to be a pretty whirlwind tour here. So I'm going to get straight into it very quickly. I'm going to tell you who I am. I guess if you're going to listen to my uh, dulcet tones for the next 20 minutes, it might be a good idea just to introduce myself, but I'm not going to spend too long on this. So um, I'm an expert in personal branding and LinkedIn. I'm an international speaker and I'm a senior exec. Um, I help business leaders to tell their story, to raise their profile and grow their business. Now, you might want to just take note of what I uh, wrote and said there because that's very much going to feed into the message that I'm going to try and get across and the message that Heather's going to try and get across as well. Um, <clears throat> my company, the CV and Interview Advisors, um, we are experts in everything to do with personal branding and LinkedIn uh, as well as CVs as well and um, we work with um, lots of high profile organizations, big four firms, leading business schools, chartered institutes, recently sat down with the good guys over at uh, LinkedIn themselves to learn some insider secrets on LinkedIn and how it works, how their search algorithm works and some good stuff like that. So that's just a little bit of background about me. I have dropped some little nuggets in um, which are just designed to be thought provoking. Um, you can read these little nuggets and uh, I might make reference to them as we go through the presentation. Um, I've got I think 13 slides to go through. Uh, this is the third. So personal branding, let's let's just quickly cover what is it. So if you think about your businesses, your businesses have a brand. Um, they have uh, services and products that they sell. They have a position in their, um, in their market. They have things that they stand for. There's a company ethos. There's an identity. All companies have that, or at least should, um, even if it's just having a logo. Um, you know, that's on one end of the spectrum and thinking about that very deeply is at, is at the other end of the spectrum. But you represent your business. So your brand is just as important as your business's brand. I saw a LinkedIn profile the other day of a FTSE 250 chief exec um, and it, the picture was him drinking a pint of lager. Now, I'm sure if I was an investor or a shareholder, or even a client or a supplier of that business, I'd have some concerns over that. That is damaging to their brand. Um, but you've got to think about the message you want your uh, company to project to its marketplace. And in the same way, what do you want yourself to project to your marketplace? So it's the same thing. Um, and I guess there's two scenarios. There'll be some people on today who are looking to uh, raise their industry profile and, and represent their company better through LinkedIn. And there'll be some people who might be seeking career opportunities and using it as a tool for finding a job or a contract role or an interim position or a NED position or an advisory role. Um, and those are the sort of typical reasons that people are using LinkedIn. Um, 
but it's all about promoting your status, your knowledge, and your expertise. Um, a really important point that I want to get across, and this is this is one of my bugbears really, and I'm I'm talking in caps as my resource manager says, which I find quite funny. Um, <clears throat> so this is me shouting. LinkedIn is not social media. A lot of people will look at it as another social media platform. It, it most definitely isn't. There is a social media element to it, but it is a professional networking site. And I think that's a really key point to take away. Let's have a look at some of the risks of getting LinkedIn wrong. Um, so a word of caution here. So I often sit with groups of business owners and, and I ask them what they think their company's most viewed external communication channel is. And we'll sort of prompt, is it your website? Is it your marketing materials in general? Is it conferences, events? Is it social media? You know, do you have a big Facebook following? Most people will say one of those. Usually, they'll tell me it's their website. They think that their website is the thing that, they're, that the external world is looking at the most. And actually, it's probably going to be the LinkedIn profiles of your leaders and your external facing employees. Um, the bigger company you are, <coughs> the more likely that statement is to be true. But if we work on the basis that 85% of people that you do business with will go and check you or the representative that they're talking to out on LinkedIn, that's a lot of people looking at the LinkedIn profiles of you and your key, key people. Um, so if we think of it that way, isn't it really interesting that people spend so much time on their website? on their Facebook page, on their marketing materials, but very little time on LinkedIn. And it's just become business behavior for us to all check each other out on LinkedIn. This is where we do our due diligence on each other. Um, and why wouldn't we? If I'm going to meet with someone a week on Tuesday to talk about business, whether I'm talking to them as a, as a customer, as a supplier, um, even if I'm looking at you know, if I was applying for a job and I was being interviewed, I might go and check out the person that's interviewed me or the other way around. If someone's coming for an interview, what does their LinkedIn profile look like? You know, just in all sorts of scenarios, we check each other out on uh, LinkedIn. That's just become ingrained in business behavior. Um, so it's obviously really important that we get LinkedIn right. Um, so coming back to that point I've made, you know, we all, as business owners, spend thousands of pounds on marketing and branding and our messaging. The bigger company we become, the more likely we are to have a marketing department, and then we start hiring branding experts and um, marketing communications professionals. And we spend a lot of money on our web. We've just spent thousands on our new website. Um, you know, so it's 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 just. You know, that's what we do. We know we should do that. That's kind of second nature. But what a lot of us aren't doing is making sure that the LinkedIn profiles of our workforce and our key people are giving a positive view of the company. In fact, in most cases, the LinkedIn profiles of, uh, I, I know for a fact that Heather and I collaborate a lot on this. And I know that Heather did an analysis of a very big global brand's LinkedIn profiles of some of their key senior managers. and. The conclusion was we really couldn't say much much less than it it was like the Wild West you know the LinkedIn profiles really were poor and for all the millions they spend on their branding they even employ people that that enforce their contracts and whether you can or can't use their logo on your marketing materials if you do business with them or can you even mention that you do business with them they have people who fulfill that role within the business that get paid a salary you know you you, you know they may well ring someone up and say well you've used our logo in in the wrong size they care about that stuff yet the linkedin profiles of their key people is like the wild west there's no sense in it but these organizations are starting to realize that and do something about it. So it's all about making sure that the messaging of LinkedIn is consistent with your brand and corporate image. And so have a think about if someone viewed the LinkedIn profiles of your top employees, what would it say about them and your business? 
Um, does your personal LinkedIn profile present you as a dynamic mover and shaker in your industry, or does it say something less positive? Um, so flip it the other way now. Let's have a think about the opportunities of LinkedIn. So um, actually, I, I'm a member of a, a business mentoring group, and I was actually talking to one of my um, my buddies over there this morning, and he's just not grasped LinkedIn. He runs an inter a multi-million pound international freight forwarding company, and he was talking to me about you know what, what, Matt, what, what is you know LinkedIn just social media? What is it you know? And I said to him this morning what I said to the group the other day. I said, look, if I walked into your office and said that I and I don't work for LinkedIn, but if I did, and I walked into someone's office, I represent the largest database of customers, potential customers, suppliers, partners, and talent in the world. Our database has 500 million of those types of people in it in over 200 countries, and it's free. Would you kick me out of your office, or would you raise your eyebrows and say, let's talk? And I would hope it would be the latter, because we all spend a lot of time and money building our databases, and now we've got all the GDPR stuff to worry about next year. Well, we don't have all them issues with LinkedIn. It's the biggest database of potential customers, customers, suppliers, partners, and talent in the world. And if you're not using it, then you should be. <laughs> um, so, you know, sales teams use it to generate business. Recruitment teams use it to find talent. Procurement teams use it in the way that they would use it, you know. Um, so there's there's a proactive element to it, which, which Heather's going to cover. Um, I guess I'm more about the reactive side of it, people checking you out. So what I'm going to move on to very swiftly is how to create a LinkedIn profile that's going to do you justice. And you know, some of this revolves around your ability to conjure up the right words and to spin a line and to use the right language that's, you know, it's copywriting at the end of the day. But there are some frameworks that I can give you which will help you to keep on the right path when you're writing it. So let's have a look at the summary to start with. Um, so this is really the focal point of your LinkedIn profile. Um, in LinkedIn's wisdom, they've now decided that that section is going to be collapsed. So you can only actually see the first two lines. So it's really important that those first two lines hit people between the eyes. Um, but I like to think of it as an elevator pitch, not in a kind of horrible, cheesy way, but in a kind of positive, tell people what you can do for them kind of a way. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to do is decide your goal. Are you using it to promote your business? Are you seeking a non-exec director role? Do you want to kind of promote your role within your industry? Are you trying to reach thought leadership status? You're going to decide your goal, and then how you put together LinkedIn will follow on thereafter. Um, so the first thing to do is to tell people what you are. So my buddy, I've just been helping, um, we wrote in the first line of his LinkedIn profile that he is, uh, the CEO of an international freight forwarding company, um, um, which, with his leadership, develops um, solution. Uh, it's all about their company delivering very um, innovative um, freight forwarding solutions, which save their clients money. That was the key message that he wanted to get across. So that's what we said. So the first two lines of his LinkedIn profile, it tells people that he's the CEO of an international freight forwarding company, and with his leadership, his company uh, develops innovative, um, out-of-the-box thinking freight forwarding solutions that saves their clients money. So you've got to think about what it is you're offering. What is your value proposition, if you want to put it that way? Um, that value proposition is the value you're proposing you can bring to your target audience. So that's a really simple example there. Um, then what you've got to think about is what are the needs of your target audience? You've got to think about almost what are their objections, what are their needs, what are their challenges, and how can you overcome them? 
So I think you need to be thinking about how you can communicate that and sort of preempting, getting into their head and talking to them very personally. So talk, you know, use the word you. Talk, talk to them by using the word you. Write it in the first person. Um, so refer to yourself as I, refer to your customers as you, rather than referring to them in the third person. You know, we help customers, da 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 is fine, but you know, we help you do X, Y, Z is more powerful because you're talking to your customers. Um, so talk about what it is that you do that can help your clients if it's aimed at clients. Um, throw in a couple of examples of successes. Um, so if you've recently um, helped an organization to do X, Y, and Z, which had really good benefits, then use that as an example to bolster your message. Inject some philosophy and ethos. So my buddy Chad was talking about how it's all about integrity and honesty. Um, in fact, he was telling me that they've got a, an eight-foot um, poster on their wall in their offices that talks about integrity. So I actually quoted that. I just said, you know, we book the trend. We want to break the mold. We want to provide a good old-fashioned personal service where we're not afraid to pick up the phone and talk to you. Um, if you come down to our offices in Birmingham, you'll see a big eight-foot sign on the wall, um, poster on the wall, which talks about integrity. I just said that word for word because I thought that was a powerful message. So we injected a bit of philosophy and ethos into his profile to kind of get that message across to his audience. Um, and then what you can also do is put into the summary section all the key words that people might be searching on for you or your company. So with Chad, we definitely want the words freight forwarding in there. We want importing. We want exporting. Um, we want distribution. Um, we want manufacturing. Um, so these words we can put in a little kind of key skill section at the bottom of the summary, and that will help to make the um, LinkedIn profile more keyword rich. So in effect, we're sort of search engine optimizing the LinkedIn profile. Um, so you know, you, you've got to decide what you want to write about that stuff, but most definitely start off by telling people what you are. So we said that Chad was a, not just the um, CEO of Millennium Cargo, but we also said that he was a, um, a freight forwarding specialist because people are going to be looking out for a freight forwarder. Um, and then we went on to talk about how his company develops innovative solutions um, that help them to save money. And we, we then went on to talk about how his company can help organizations overcome certain challenges that they have within the freight forwarding arena. Um, we didn't, with him, put in any examples, but you could put examples in. We injected some philosophy and ethos into there. Um, and then we, we, we're going to add some key skills at the bottom uh, to make it keyword rich. Another good thing to do is to add some quotes. And Heather's LinkedIn profile has these, and I'm going to add them in for, for Chad. Um, so they're very big on customer service. And he has a little motto, which is basically around adding value and making sure, you know, you, delivering a service is all well and good, but unless you're adding, you're adding value um, through integrity and honesty, then you know, that's his motto. I can't remember the exact words. But what we did was we, we took a quote um, Heather, you like this. Actually, another quote from Jeff Bezos about c the customer journey. And then underneath that sat um, Chad's quote on their ethos on customer service. And when you put Chad's quote next to Jeff's quote, you're associating psychologically Chad with Jeff. Jeff is the CEO of Amazon. And that's a very powerful way of, of, of getting a message across, but aligning yourself with real industry leaders. Um, other key sections to think about. I'm running out of time already. Um, the professional headline is the bit at the top. That's the bit that says um, it defaults. If you're the managing director of XYZ Limited, it will default to that. You've got to try and add something a little bit more insightful. So, um, you know, if I go back to when, I mean, I've built my business up now. We've, we're an international business with, with, with quite, quite a lot of people working for it. But when it was little old me, um, I had a little thing there, I put, you know, owner of the CV and interview advisors, expert in helping um, 
business owners and job seekers to raise their profile and find the job. Words to that effect sounded a bit better than that when I wrote it. But you've got to tell people how you can help them. So this professional headline, you've got to think of some words that goes beyond telling people what your job title is and what where you work. I'm going to show you an example in a minute anyway, so this will all become a lot clearer. Um, but think about what you want to communicate. Think about the the things you want people to remember about you uh, when you're not there. So there's another one of Jeff Bezos's quote, the CEO of Amazon. Personal brand is what pe is how people remember you when you're not in the room. So and people tend to think in three. So if you tell people three things about you, um, they can pretty much cope with that. Um, the other way to think of it is a value proposition. What is it that you're going to do for them and how will that benefit them? And then the career history section. So this is called positions. And um, <clears throat> the key here is to be quite brief. So what I'd recommend is just have an over, a description of the company <clears throat> that you either work for or have worked for in the past. Have a, a summary of the role. So in a nutshell, what was the purpose of your role? And then maybe have three or four little bullet points that describe some key things that you delivered, some achievements or projects or business benefits that you delivered. You don't need the typical you know, 15 bullet points that you'd expect to see on a CV describing all your duties and responsibilities. They're not needed. Um, projects are another really good section. Projects is where you can write case studies about pieces of work that you've delivered. Um, so we, we, with Heather, I know Heather on her LinkedIn profile, she's got some case studies about some really good work that she's done uh, at, a, at a, I think, one of the business schools and also for one of the big banks. Um, uh, I can't remember the specifics, but there were examples of work that she's done that she wanted to showcase to other potential clients. Um, and those case studies tell a story, and they're written in a very specific methodology that we call STAR situation, task, actions, and results. Um, so think about who you work for and what situation they were in, what your task was, so what you were brought, what, in what capacity you were brought in, the key things you did to drive some kind of positive outcome, and then the result is the outcome. So if you can write some case studies in STAR and pop them into the project section, they're a really good way of showcasing um, successes that you might have driven for some of your, your clients. Um, so uh, we've got a couple of, uh, we're on slide 33 more slides to go. I just want to very quickly, there's going to be some of you out there who might be thinking, well, actually, you know what, Matt, can your company not just help with my LinkedIn profile? Um, so yes, we can. Of course, we write LinkedIn profiles for uh, business leaders, consultants, interim managers, NEDs, job seekers. That's what we do all day long. So anybody who wants to use our service will match you up with one of our senior people. Um, You'll have a two-hour telephone-based fact-finding session to find out all about you and your message and what you want to achieve. Um, we'll help define your value proposition and your go-to-market strategy, all your kind of strengths and skills, your philosophy and ethos, your projects, i.e. those case studies. Uh, we'll write the positions uh, in the optimum format. Really, we're just going to write your LinkedIn profile from a blank canvas, which is all about maximizing your marketability in your industry. Um, so we can do all that for you, and I've got a, a special offer at the end I'll, I'll talk about. But Heather, are you ready for this? I haven't warned Heather. This is, this is Heather's LinkedIn profile, but it's a great example um, of how to put Thanks. together. <laughs> You're welcome, Heather. Um, this, is, this is Heather's LinkedIn profile, um, and this is how I suggest you look at structuring it and the style that you would write it. So I'm just going to leave that up on screen um, for a couple of minutes whilst you have a read through it. <coughs> you can see those two quotes that we put in at the bottom. In fact, Heather's put three, one from Jeff, one from Mark, and one from herself. So she's aligning herself with these people. I think that's a really good tactic. Just whilst people are reading through that, Heather, any, any thoughts you want to share there? No, I have found, because um, uh, I sort of say to everybody um, that that wrote mine, uh, I have to sort of say, whilst I, I think I can talk for England and I'm um, pretty articulate in that sense, when it comes to writing about myself, I do really struggle. So 
for many, many years, I just having another bash, another bash, another bash, another bash. And when I met Matt, I just thought, you know, Matt, <laughs> do you get a magic? And I get so many compliments about my LinkedIn profile. When you read the whole lot, um, it's, it's, I tell you what, it's the best time I ever set, spent is getting Matt to do this. It's absolutely brilliant. Bless your heart, bless your heart. But, uh, well, I had good material to work with, you see. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that there's an example. We'll we'll send a recording out. So if you want to look at that in more detail, you can. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is recommendations. Um, you know, just just really have them. LinkedIn themselves reckon you're three times more likely to be contacted about an opportunity if you have a selection of good recommendations on your LinkedIn profile. We, we all know about sort of social proof. Um, so you know. It, it, People use Trustpilot and every, all these other review sites. You know, LinkedIn is another place that you should have these. So they have tremendous value. Request them through uh, LinkedIn. Make sure it's not horrible and generic. You know, I've known so and so for ten years. They're honest, reliable, and trustworthy, and I would have no hesitation in recommending them for any job in the world ever. Forget that. Horrible. But if it's authentic, credible, and well written, they have a lot of power. Um, I'm just so, coming on that. Matt, can I just quickly come in on that one, if I may? Yeah. That, um, what I do, guys, is I go, as soon as I've done a job for somebody, if I, especially if I know the job has gone really, really well, then I, I go out to every single one of my clients directly afterwards, and sort of, especially if they're on LinkedIn, and I ask for them. You know, I think this is what's really important. You've got to ask for this stuff. And most people go, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do that for you. Because um, you need to keep them fresh as well, so there's, there's more ones coming through. So this, to me, I think is really important. Sorry, Matt. No, it's a good point because I've I've fell victim of that because I, when I was hands-on writing CVs, and I still do the odd LinkedIn profile, but not very often. But my team does that now. But when I was writing them, I was getting client testimonials. But then when I sort of stepped back a few years ago to build the business, then I stopped getting them, and I would get comments that, oh, you haven't had any recommendations for ages, you know. Have you taken your eye off the ball? You're not very good anymore. And so Heather's right. You've got to keep them up to date. Um, anyway, before I hand over to Heather, I just want to give you a solution. If you're all sat there thinking, well, this is all great, but gosh, I don't have time for this. Or, you know, could I really write something that powerful? Um, and gosh, Matt, you've whisked through that. and I Didn't get it all down. Well, you know, look, we can just do it for you. And we've got a special offer um, that runs until the 7th of July. 224 plus VAT. I mean, it's peanuts at the end of the day. Um, it is discounted. Um, if you order before the end of the month, I'll also give you a free consultation on how you can generate significant revenue streams through thought leadership selling. Um, we've generated over two million pounds worth of revenue through a very specific and deliberate thought leadership strategy, which includes running webinars. And a lot of your business, you people out there, a lot of your businesses would be able to run such an initiative. So if anybody's interested in having a free consultation with me on that, if you order um, the LinkedIn profile service before end of month, which is Friday, um, then I'll throw that in free. If you want to order, and I just looked at the web page before the webinar, um, for some reason our website's gone wobbly, um, but um, the link to order is that one there. It's our web address slash WEC. Or if you just want to inquire at this stage, Bob us an email through on info at CV and interviewadvisors.co.uk. Okay, so that's my bit done. I hope that was useful. I'm now going to hand over to Heather um, and she's going to take it on from here. So um, I'm going to just change the presenter, click Heather White. So Heather, hopefully on your screen you've got the right thing up and then I'm going to click yes and um, that should take people over to Heather's screen. There it is. I can see her tapping away frantically, thinking, oh, gosh, I should have had it up by now. <laughs> right, so I'm muting myself now, and Heather's going to take over. Okay. I was just chatting away to myself, actually, because I thought I was unmuted. Um, right, okay. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Um, Mark, Matt. <laughs> what do I like? So thank you everyone for uh, joining us on this sort of session again. I add my thanks to uh, Maggie and to um, Matt because we know how time poor you guys are. So very quickly then, Heather White, known as a networking personal brand expert and also I'm a matchmaker helping people get boardroom experience. 
Now, I know that a lot of you um, work with um, large corporates. We'll just sort of see why the slides aren't turning. There we go. Um, and so like a lot of you, I work with large corporations. And so I know what it's like when you're trying to network and build relationships with these guys when, um, you know, these, these companies are quite sort of busy. They're quite complex. And so my job is to network myself into these organizations and to win opportunities. So I hopefully will be able to sort of be able to talk about this from the position of what is it like to get to these guys and actually create the um, conversations that you were looking for. So uh, my job then is to look at LinkedIn and use it for a tool for business growth. And what I want to do is make sure that we're linking this with your networking activity, your business development activity, and how you use LinkedIn. Now, the reason why you know, I bundle all those together is because actually I don't think you can separate them, is that you know, business development for me is use a networking as a dynamic tool. Unless you guys out there have got really big marketing uh, budget, which most of us don't have, then what we're most of us are looking for is the quick, easy routes that takes us to people that we want to be connecting with. So I use networking and LinkedIn as a major part of my business development programs. I use a few other tools as well, but LinkedIn is always running in the background along with what I'm doing. And what I want to do today is to show you the practical things that I do and lots and lots of other people do to achieve the results that uh, you're looking for. Now, there's a number of points I want to make. Um, first of all, is when I'm looking at using LinkedIn, when I'm using networking, in fact, when I'm using any marketing tool, my mantra is quite simple. Can I get a cup of coffee with you? Can we get a telephone call? So any activity I'm doing is all about, can I get in front of you? Can we have a chat? However, within that, in order for someone to say, yes, I definitely want to have a chat with you, I've got to be compelling, interesting, useful, and all of those sort of things, you know, thought leader, whatever. I've got to have all of those things behind me, energy, passion, for someone to go, yeah, let's have a chat. Yeah, you sound really interesting. But this is my mantra. Whatever I do, can I get a cup of coffee? Can I get a telephone call? That's what I'm trying to achieve. Because until I get to that stage, then there is no such thing as business. Well, not for me anyway. One thing I want to cover off really quickly is the time issue versus the cost. Now, I think it was, who is it that said, um, Jackie, I think you posted a question that said, you know, um, not used it very much before, but how do you make sure it's not draining on your time? Now, if I may be so bold, is that anyone who's coming in to use LinkedIn as a marketing tool or as a profile tool, business development tool, then you have to invest time. One of the things that Matt's already said is the brilliant thing about LinkedIn is that for most of us, there is no cost. I don't, I don't have the premium one. I have tried it, um, but I think most of the stuff I want to do, I can do without it. Uh, there might be a time at some point in the future I might decide to go down the, the cost route, you know, paying a, a monthly premium, which I'll cover off later on. However, I want to, I'm doing this session by using the free bit. Now, you need to get your mindset into the right place saying, right, if LinkedIn is going to be that valuable to me, then it's not a case of draining time, it's a case of investing time. So hopefully, Jackie, that then starts to start to pull on why this thing is so valuable. And I'm, you know, want to do the practical part, which is sort of show you how. So the rest of this bit is about how do you monetize your LinkedIn? So first of all, it will increase your personal and your business profile. It will give you opportunities to get intel on others. It does help you to create some good marketing campaigns. It is one of the best CRM systems ever. Um, why? Okay, why is it the best CRM system ever? It's because everyone updates their own stuff. You don't have to keep trying to update it. What it also does is it gives you their latest, you know, um, their contact details. It will give you um, uh, their latest job titles and all this sort of stuff. I've just done a download. I've got about, I'm just shy of 5,000 people on my uh, LinkedIn profile. And uh, I just did a download, did a quick categorization of people. And, you know, it gave me a marvelous opportunity to go back to people saying, hello, how are you, chat, 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 and all this sort of stuff. More on that one later on. As we know, it's a quick route to, to key people, and it is a great way to be seen as a thought leader without having to go all that nonsense about getting your web people to, to upload and 
taken all that time. This is just dead simple. So, the risks. If you try and sell yourself, you're at risk. If you start hassling people, you're at risk. And it does take time. Now, what I hate <laughs> with passion is when I connect with someone who sent me a standard invite. I hate standard invites anyway. But if you send me a standard invite, and then within seconds I get an email saying, by the way, we do this, blah, blah, blah. I want to sell you this, and this is really cool. Then I immediately, one, I report them from spanning, and two, is I will unfollow them straight away. Now, I have tried this out so many times ago, and I'm sure this person will be different. Nope. What they're doing is they're just going through, click, 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 you know, link, 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 with no thought to uh, who this other person is. It's just volume, volume, volume. Do not do that, because actually, for me, what that does, it really damages your reputation. If I'm emailing people that accepted my invite, and uh, I then keep going back saying, coffee, 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 and I don't get any replies, then I'm hassling. What does that do to your brand? Okay, it is bad news. Now, the risk here is that it does take time. However, the benefits, if you do this right, actually should give you massive opportunities. I also want to quickly talk about the rules. What I personally do, and everyone will have their own opinion on this one, so you've got to work it out for yourself to some degree, is personally, everyone I meet, without exception, they go, I invite them on to LinkedIn, and it's normally always a personalized invitation. However, Everyone who invites me, I don't always take them on. I always check them out first to sort of see what, do I, what can I see about them and if I think they have any value. Okay? And if they don't have any value, then sorry guys, you get an ignore. I don't report people because that's not appropriate. But I've been, I've been spammed so many times, I don't, I don't accept everyone's invites. But you've got to set up your own set of rules, but have some. So, let's be clear. LinkedIn is the, one of the best search engine optimization tools that there is out there, along with YouTube and uh, obviously the Googles for stuff. Because LinkedIn will always push us up at the very top. So come back to what Matt was sort of saying, you do need to make sure you're putting the right keywords and phrases into your LinkedIn. So if you want to be found, then you need to optimize this. When Matt and I were recently trained up by LinkedIn to do some training, um, one of the things they're talking about is how they're going to really, really improve their algorithms. So this, this search engine optimization will be vital, but you've got to have the right keywords into your profile. It does help to build credibility, which I'll go on to. It does help you to do thought leadership, and it does give you access to the informal chats to build trust. And if you're committed to this, it, all the time it will come back to coffee, tea, chat, and that's all we need to get the relationships going. So, okay, uh, let me just get, I don't know if you can, can you see the whole thing? We get rid of that for a sec. Uh, oh, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> right, uh, how do I minimize that? I don't know. Okay, I hope you can see the whole screen. Matt, can you let me know? Can you see the whole screen all right? Matt? Or Maggie? Whatever. I, so, I can see it. You're fine. I can see it. Okay, fine. So, so I've got that panel thing up and I can't see what you can see. Okay, fine. So no. let's go into now the practical side, which is profile and marketing. So first of all, you do need to complete your profile and you need to crack on with that one as soon as possible. If you're looking at using LinkedIn as a marketing tool, if I'm doing my due diligence on you, I want to see a completed profile. So crack on with that. Everything Matt talked about, get on with it. Now, the second thing is, uh, and Matt was sort of touching on this about the thought leadership side of things, what I would suggest that you do is to look at how often would you want to be writing some articles or having opinions. Now, when you go and look at my LinkedIn profile later on, you will see that I write diff two different ty types of articles. One will be where it's quite in-depth, um, and the other one will be a, an opinion on something else, and they'll be quite short. What I have found is that the opinion, uh, quoting somebody else, tends to draw in more um, likes and comments than me sort of spending hours and hours and hours writing um, a thought leadership piece. So what I do is I balance the two things out. So for me, it's about when I have something to say, that's when I would do it. But for others, you might actually want to have a process when you're sort of saying, right, every month I'll do something. 
this comes down to your particular style and actually what you're trying to achieve with your LinkedIn profile. A shortcut on this one is to share lots of other people's articles. When you're reading through the timelines, then what you can do is to look at something really interesting and actually show those and have an opinion on that. And you'll find that that will attract a lot of businesses, uh, a lot of um, traffic, which is all what we're looking for, and then that means you can start conversations. Do post on the timeline as well. If you've got an opinion or something short you want to say, get it out there. Um, there's also another one on uploading slides, which I personally don't use, but I've been having a look through that one. And um, some people actually do do a lot of uploads and they post them on there, which means that it's another way of being found. What I've also noticed, though, when you look at people who've uploaded slides, um, you get a lot of people sort of flogging their stuff. They seem to be tracking people and then just bumming up a load of nonsense. However, nevertheless, I think for some people that could be a useful thing to do. And of course, uh, join groups. Join groups to get uh, proactive and to get chatting. So this is how I'm now going to talk about doing these things, because this is the way that you actually increase your profile and give your, get together with your activity. So I'm going to use mine as an example, okay, so you can sort of see what I've been doing. What's so great, and this is all the free stuff, what is so great about LinkedIn is how you access people. So what I've done here is I've done a screenshot here that says, right, okay, uh, I think this is in the last seven days, I've had 347 people that's viewed my profile. I've had over a thousand view my posts, okay? And then here, and I'll show you some examples of this in just one second, what exactly what I've done. But these are literally just for the picking. Then you've got uh, your activity. You just press on, click on your activity. And it will sort of show your articles and show your posts. And this is where down here you can see the likes and you can see the comments. And you can then click on this to see who's actually viewed that post as well. On my actual articles, then I can then sort of see who's actually done the click through and I can see who's liked. Okay. And then your other one, which I absolutely adore this one. And coming back to your point, Jackie, about time draining, then that this is just exquisite because I love this bit saying who's celebrating and who's got new posts. I am forever sort of saying some congratulations. Now, some people it's just a case of just press the thumb going congrats. And then other people I'll be doing, haven't seen you for ages, how are you doing? Fancy a cup of coffee or fancy a telephone chat. So with the new positions is that majority of these guys I'll be going, well done, that's absolutely fantastic news. Comment, 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 fancy coffee, fancy a telephone chat. So everything for me, coffee, telephone chat, coffee, telephone chat. And this is how I build a lot of relationships with people I know well, but I need to reconnect, but people I don't know so well and I want to connect with. So examples. So when I was going through an article that I posted, and going back to the previous slide, so an article I posted there, there was a person here, I had four likes on this one, so it wasn't a big one, but nevertheless, there was a, a person over at KPMG that I hadn't spoken to for a little while, and she's particularly well connected. So what I did was I dropped her a note sort of saying, you know, thanks for liking my article. Haven't seen you for ages. I'm coming over to KPMG in the next um, couple of weeks. Thanks for meeting up for a coffee. If I go into who's actually viewed my profile, then as you can sort of see, uh, there's a whole lot of bits. Now, this is the free bit, so you don't get to see all of the detail on this, but this is fine. This is enough here for me anyway. So Charles Hardy, as you can see, he's a chap that uh, coached both Matt and myself, okay? And um, so I'm meeting up for him with a, for another cup of coffee. Now, at the moment, Charles is doing a lot of recommendations to me and uh, to Matt as well for further opportunities. So he's one of my connectors. And now that means we get to have a cup of coffee, get the latest that low down. And then on that basis, um, you know, we get more opportunities. So there we go, tea, coffee. Then I got um, one of my contacts. She's just recently got um, a lovely bit of promotion. So again, congratulations, comment, tea, coffee. And then on my article, he sort of liked it. Uh, and I said, right, don't know this guy. Had to sort of, sort of send him an email. And then, because he's, he's actually based in uh, India. So for this one, it's a case of fancy, te fancy telephone chat. So do you see what I mean by what you've got is you've got just for the picking where you've got people who are viewing stuff because you're creating things. You've got an opinion, you're creating stuff. And what you're looking to do is just then to generate the next bit, which is thanks ever so much, fancy a tea and a coffee. Now, so that's, those, that's just sitting there. The other part I want to talk about is 
this to me is just absolutely awesome, which I've already mentioned, is what you want to do is everybody you meet, get them onto LinkedIn. If you're going to do your research and you want to sort of uh, find people, then say something nice in the invite, get them onto your LinkedIn. So like I say, I'm about just shy of 5,000 5, people at the moment. I'm not going for massive numbers. I am trying to go for quality. And so what I did the other day, I downloaded the whole lot. Okay, then I categorize them. It's a bit laborious, but nevertheless, once you, you know, if you're if you're a whiz kid over on the Excel, what I can then do is I can categorize my people so I can pick out all my key buyers. Now from there, I then create a marketing campaign. But what I've got is I've got their latest email addresses. Okay, now some of them are obviously their um, the personal ones. Uh, I'm a bit more careful on those, but it doesn't really matter. But what I would what I've done is I've created this marketing campaign, and so some of it will be about I haven't seen you for ages, fancy a cup of coffee. Some of them I will be doing some posts on my LinkedIn and I might go out this way so I know they actually get to see it. Um, some of them I will actually add on to one of my other CRM systems because I'm building up a series of articles uh, through another mechanism that I might then do. Because like, um, so you know what Maggie and I do is we are always connecting people because they're, you know, we can make some, we can be helpful to them. So one of the other campaigns I've got is when I hear about opportunities that I think are useful, I use that database that I've downloaded as a way of getting out to people on a collective basis going, just heard about this opportunity, I don't know if this is useful to you. So that's what I do very simply, is I build it, download it, categorize them, and then use that in a slightly different way. If you go on the paid route, then obviously you can do some of this via LinkedIn. Uh, so it's, it's about looking through what the value is that would actually suit your purposes. So I want to contact somebody. So I could, you know, we can make, I can make a telephone call. So this chap here, uh, Russell Dalglish, new contact of mine, he's an amazing connector. He's going to be so useful to me. And likewise, I'm going to be really useful to him. So what am I going to do, you know, to get in contact now I've identified somebody. I could pick up the phone and call him. However, um, you know, that can work, but some people it's easier to email. So now I've got his details, I can email him, or I can actually email straight through LinkedIn. What's interesting, I do find from time to time, uh, and actually quite, recent, quite, quite frequently, so it works quite well, so some people actually answer their LinkedIn emails more than they answer the email emails, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what I do is I practice this quite a lot, I test it quite a lot. Depending on who the person is, I might go through LinkedIn, and otherwise I might just do the normal one. And I've started doing a little bit more just telephone them, because quite often people have their um, telephone number actually on their LinkedIn profiles too. So as you can sort of see, you've got all that stuff for the picking. What you've then got is you've got the download stuff, and then once you've done all of that, it's now a case of contact, 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 okay? And I just keep going for a coffee, telephone chat, coffee, telephone chat, because again, I'm just looking for getting started. Now, the other thing about uh, LinkedIn, as we all know or should know, is that it's the most amazing um, research tool. Coming back to one of Matt's comments with, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have proper LinkedIn profiles completed, so, it, you know, it can only go so far. But the amount of times I've um, taken the LinkedIn, I've printed off the LinkedIn, their LinkedIn profiles, I take it with me. When I take out my paperwork to talk to a client, I always have their LinkedIn profile on top. Okay, and then you get some amazing conversations. Uh, and that's what exactly, for me and my business, exactly what I'm looking for, especially if part of the services that I do, so for example, I was with Christie's yesterday, um, the actual auctioneers. I'm talking to uh, one of my contacts there, we met up for coffee, and uh, I take her LinkedIn profile, we're having a chat about uh, what's going on in both of our worlds. Now, there was a few things she sort of said that indicated that there was no business opportunities just yet. And uh, so I thought myself, right, okay, so my next role is how can I be of service? So within that, I sort of say, listen, you know, I've just been looking at your LinkedIn profile. And she went, oh, no, don't. I said, I know. I said, it's rubbish, isn't it? And she's going, it's awful. I said, get a grip. I said, do something with it. And I'm talking to her like this because, you know, we get on really well. And so, she's, so she said, well, I haven't got time. 
look, look I'm going to connect you with Matt because Matt can do get on and get all of this done. I said, look, you represent your business. You know, if you're in L&D, for goodness sake, learning and development, get on with it. So anyway, Matt, I'll send that uh, connection on to you later on, mate. So here's the most important point, guys, is that it's all about how you do the invite. That's really important. So I've identified here a chap called Kevin Murphy. Now, I've already been in contact with this other chap down here called Adam Tricker. So I want to send an email to this folk because I want to build up a relationship with this guy for my own purposes. So what I do is two things. I sort of check out his LinkedIn profile. I also checked out his Twitter account to see what he's doing. Well, he actually hasn't got one, but the business has. Now, I can leverage if I want to. If I've got relationships with my two mutual connections, I can leverage that. So what I do, I click on the connect, and then I always add a note. And then as you can sort of see, here's something that I've crafted that I think would work for Kevin to actually accept my LinkedIn uh, invite. Now, all I'm doing at this point is just creating a conversation so he doesn't think it's just a standard thing. What I'm trying to do here, because what this guy will probably do is just click the mobile, on his mobile, he'll probably click that, yes, accept, yes, accept, yes, accept. So he probably won't reply to this email. But once I've got his acceptance, what I will then do, because don't forget I'm now going to pop up in his message um, box. Once I've got that, um, so I've got that part, then I can go back and sort of say, right, can we um, can we have a tea, coffee, and all that sort of thing. So just conscious on the time. So bringing this to a close very quickly now, is that what I've sort of shown you is the basics, but it's like any sports hero in your life. If you don't get the basics right, I can promise you LinkedIn doesn't work as well as you want to. What you do is you repeat everything I've just sort of said, and you build in a discipline. So coming back to your point, Jackie, about the uh, draining on time, then actually this isn't a drain on time, it's actually a fantastic use of time, simply because it's such a brilliant, brilliant marketing tool. Now, in the very beginning, uh, someone also asked about activating LinkedIn groups. What I've done, whilst Matt was chatting, I very quickly put in a slide here, when you get the slides, that shows you actually how to activate a group. What I would also say, though, is that once you've activated, then that's when you've got to get back into the heavy marketing side of it to make sure you bring people in. So don't take it on lightly, because you do have to manage this in order to get the right conversations going, depending on your business. But they're very, very simple to do, Jean, so hopefully you shouldn't have any problems. Right, for those, someone else asked about the pricing um, pre this session. So I've just put up the pricing really quickly, and also what it actually gives you. You can do a huge amount without paying a penny, okay? And that's the bit I want to leave you with to sort of think about. So like Matt, I've got my offer, okay? And my offer is 60 minutes looking at how you want to use LinkedIn to create the activity that you're looking for. It's a Skype coaching session, 60 minutes, all of this sort of stuff here. And uh, like Matt, I've done an offer for you as well. But I'm very conscious of time. And so, oh, there's a whole range of books you could read, not about LinkedIn, but just in general that I think are really useful. And we're now to the Q&A bit. There we go. <laughs> whiz, whiz, whiz. Matt. Hello, yeah. Heather. Thank you. That was awesome, as always. And your your presentation looks a lot sexier than mine, so I'm very <laughs> jealous. But uh, you'll have to, I have to pay you to do mine for me. Um, but, um, no, that, that was great. Thank you. So um, I'm going to... If, if anybody's got any questions, then you know what to do. Head over to the questions area and uh, pop your questions in the questions box and then we'll handle them. Um, I've got some here already. I was going to say that because Marianne and Carol both asked in the very beginning about building them, building a business and Carol's looking at new prospects. Uh, what would be quite useful, Anne-Marie and Carol, is if you want to pop in whether or not uh, the bits that I covered off gave you sufficient detail on how you can do that. Yeah, good idea, yeah. Um, we've got, Jean said um, about um, activating a, a business LinkedIn group, and I think Heather sort of covered that off at the end. So, Jean, maybe you can just uh, let us know whether that sort of answered your question there. But I think the thing is, setting up a LinkedIn group is fantastic. Um, and it's a great way of, of, of sort of getting all the people you want to get all into one place 
and then distributing your content ideas and advice and expertise to them. Um, but the thing is, if you neglect a group, um, then it, 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 it kind of dies a bit of a death. So it's something you have to kind of keep chipping away at. Um, but consider, so hopefully we answered um, your question there. Yeah, so when you consider, Gene, if you look on how many groups are there on LinkedIn, I mean, there are millions and millions and millions and millions of them. Um, when you look through in a little bit more detail, you'll find that there's a lot, whilst you've got, you know, stacks of these sort of things, the majority of them are pretty dormant. So I would, uh, I think they are a great idea, but I would be very considered on what's the purpose of the group and also do you have sufficient contacts to start to generate conversations? Because people are just so busy that they tend to uh, only want to join groups that are pretty active. Now, it's always a chicken and egg sort of thing. So I think depending on how many LinkedIn um, people you've got at the moment, if I know, say, you've got a couple of hundred or something, I would sort of say you need to build that up to a couple of thousand so that you've got a good database to go out to in the first place. So then that in itself will generate some more interest. Yeah. And, and Heather, Rosemary is asking how uh, we go about managing the new trend of people not giving their email details on their profile. I think the new interface doesn't quite work like the old interface where you could just click the little hamburger menu and in there would be the email address if people had bothered to put it there. So how are you extracting people's email addresses um, in order to then send them an email? Right. Can you still see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me come into, I'm assuming that, that you're... Um, uh, we assume that yours is open. Right, so as you guys can see here, then I, you know, you can sort of see Matt's, I'm sorry, no, I'm doing the wrong thing, sorry, forget that. So I'm talking a load of rubbish there, forget that for a second. Let me go into um, mine. Um, right, see you Right, so as you sort of see the, they're over here, so a lot of people nowadays are actually putting in their Gmail account or Hotmail or something else like that. When you come to do your download, uh, um, Rosemary, then when you come to do your download, actually what it does is it will pull off all the email addresses as well. Okay, so when it pulls off the email addresses, uh, what you'll then do is you'll then, you know, you'll then have to sort of think through your campaign that you want to do, whether or not you're happy for it to go out to a private email address, or whether or not you take that person off for that particular um, marketing campaign. Um, now, if people aren't putting their email addresses in anyway, then what I would then do when I've done my download is um, the ones where I don't have an email address, is I will then be thinking, right, okay, I need to be talking to these guys via LinkedIn. Now, that all sounds like a lot of hassle, but let me just sort of tell you, if you've got a good contact, so if I look at this uh, this chap called Tudor, what a lovely name. If I look at this chap called Tudor, and if I look at what he does, if I was doing a campaign for CTOs, um, then that means I can still pull on this bloke uh, through LinkedIn. So no matter what, you can get them. It's just that, you know, you've just got to look at your marketing campaign in slightly different ways. Um, if I can just add, add to that as well. When GDPR comes in in May 2018, um, I'm going to say what, we, we, you want to say what those initials mean, please? Oh, it's the new data protection laws. Yeah. So come come May 2018, you won't be able to take Tudor's email address from LinkedIn and send them an email because that will that will um, get you a fine, potentially a fine up to 20 million euros or four percent of your annual turnover. Um, unless Tudor has opted in to receive your marketing literature, then you won't be able to send an email. So um, that's why LinkedIn going forwards is going to be a very important tool because email marketing will become very problematic and difficult. So um, I think actually longer term, um, managing your contacts inside of LinkedIn is, is, is probably going to be the less risky option if you're concerned about the uh, EU and British um, legislation on data protection and privacy. 
And so then that would then beg the question later on next year whether or not uh, we will have to review whether or not do we buy the LinkedIn premium sort of services because that then gives you more opportunities to uh, do some campaigns with inside LinkedIn. However, yep. I think it comes back to a point that Vat and I are both making here is that if you sort of think about it, this is the start of a conversation and if any of us would start trying to flog stuff using LinkedIn, that would be a mistake because you're not building the trust. So when I'm doing this, personally, it's all about building up a conversation so that I get the teas and the coffees. Okay, now you, you all got different products and services, so therefore you're gonna have slightly different mindsets towards this. But nevertheless, if you're gonna use LinkedIn or you want to use LinkedIn as a more of an aggressive marketing campaign, I think it's the wrong tool, if I'm honest. Because I can sort of say, if I get a spam, you're off my list. Like, there's no ifs and buts, you're straight off. So this is always, when I'm talking about marketing campaigns, I am talking about something that is valuable, that adds value, that generates a conversation. Yeah, good advice. Um, two more questions. Somebody's saying, if I have a document describing a particular project success, is it better to put it in the separate project section or load it as an additional media under the particular role that it relates to? It's a really good question. If you'd asked me that question six months ago, I would have said just put it in the project section because the projects link off from each position and the projects could be reordered um, and popped wherever you wanted in your LinkedIn profile. But again, in LinkedIn's wisdom, they've moved it and they're less prominent. So if it's a really important piece of work, you might take the view that you want to add it in either in the text under that position um, or if, if you do have a presentation about it, then by all means stick it into the media. Um, I don't think there's a right and wrong. You know, if you need it to be seen, you put it somewhere where it's going to get seen. And it's kind of a shame that the projects are a little bit more hidden than they used to be. Um, but nevertheless, okay. they, they I was going to say, sorry Matt, I was going to sort of say what you could also consider though is actually writing it up as an article uh, and it not, don't put so much, don't, you don't need to put massive energy into it, but you can write it up as an article and then what you could then do is then um, uh, make comment on that on the timeline, post it on the timeline because that is, that's what draws attention to it um, and that would be a third place that you could put it. And the last question before we bring Maggie in to, to, to finish us off, and, and, and I'm going to hand this over to, to uh, Heather to answer. Um, when commenting on other people's info slash articles, what do we need to bear in mind about copyright, etc.? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, what I would always do is um, um, when, you, when you put it into your, when you make, turn it into an article, Okay, then what I do is I do a top and tail, stick in the article in the between part. I always make sure it's fully referenced to the person. I put in the link to the person as well or where the article is. And so um, I'm not changing anything. I'm just adding my opinion. Uh, and that I found has worked incredibly well. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, Heather. All right, good. So um, looks like me and Heather are done. Um, so if Maggie wants to come back in and, and, um, and just uh, say bye bye to everybody. Um, that would be great. Brilliant. I actually I want to say a massive thank you to you both. Um, I think you've covered an awful lot in a very short amount of time, and I know that we've we've tipped over the hour, but um, I hope people will find it uh, will find it useful. There's been so much here. I mean, and I think much looking back to the kind of the first comment you made about you know your brand is just as important as the company brand as entrepreneurs. I, I know sometimes um, sometimes the business owners want to necessarily sometimes shy away from being in the spotlight, but. Um, yeah, you have to make sure that everything that you have online about yourself and, and your staff matches, you know, matches what you want your company to say, because certainly within the WeConnect Connect, uh, context, our corporate members are, are looking and will be looking you up. So big thank you to you both. Um, we will share the recording, we will share the slides and have another look at those all those different resources that um, that Heather recommended. And I just want to say thank you to you all for, for dialing in and for participating again today and for all those great questions. That's amazing. Matt and Heather, thank you you very much for your time and I'll send around a follow-up note which details um, the very kind offers that you've made as well so thank you very much thanks Maggie thanks, thanks everybody bye. have a good yeah, afternoon thank you bye. bye thanks everyone cheers bye bye